Donna? Donna Barringer? She's not going to make it. Okay. Thank you. The Ways and Means Committee meeting is now called to order. Yes, sir. Let me be quiet. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Cruz Here. Alderman Florida. Present. Alderman Berenger. Vice Chairman Williamson. Here. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman French. Alderman Vaccaro. Present. Alderman Carter. Present. Chairman Kennedy. Here. Seven present. We have one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we're here to continue the... Uh, Review of the budget as a Ways and Means Committee. We do have some handouts today from the airport. I'm passing this way and the other side. Mm -hmm. I did alert everyone that we would have the cameras here today. This is an ongoing part of the committee trying something new, having a more uh, visible process. Uh, we had several public hearings last week that we thought went very well and were well attended. Mm -hmm. And so there are many requests to have the process continue to be open in that way. Okay. So if you would, just review your budget with us, and then we can go to any questions from members of the committee. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us. I will introduce the team. I'm Rhonda Hamnibrigi, so I'm the director of the airport. To my right is Susan Kapinski. She's the deputy director for finance and administration. Gerard Slay is our deputy director of operations. Cornell Mays, who is our Deputy Director covering uh, Planning and Engineering, is at a conference for us, an airport conference, so he's not here today. Harry Moore is our Director under the DBE office. Poppins, what did I say, Moore? I do that every time. My apologies, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Henrietta Brown is our Manager in the Finance Department, so uh, we'll all be able to answer any questions. Susan's going to cover the first part, uh, kind of walking through the budget, and then I'll cover the last part, which has a number of things that's going on at the airport, which we feel is important for the everybody to understand. So, uh, Alderman Kennedy, if you want, when Susan finishes her part, we can stop for questions at that time on the pure budget before mm -hmm. I start, or we can wait till the end, whichever works for you. You have. We've have. got about 15 slides total. Susan's going to walk through about seven slides that are directly on the budget. Mm -hmm. Just three? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and, then, <laughs> and then I'll walk through the remaining slides, which is more about the airport and where we're at with some projects and things going on. That would be fine if we just do them both together. Okay, and great. Then we'll start great. Mm -hmm. All right. Good morning. Good morning. The first slide that I would like to go through uh, is the 2013 uh, versus 2014 revenue variances. Um, I included in this slide, uh, right from your packet, what the revenue budget was for 2013 and what we are requesting. Um, and I'd like to go through the variances. Uh, the landing fees, um, the landing fees from the airlines cover the cost of the airfield, and as you can see, they are not increasing much. That's a good thing, because that means that our cost of the airfield is not increasing. Rents, um, it's down 3.4 percent, and the main reason for this is that we've got American Airlines uh, leasing less space. Um, and the reason for that is twofold. First of all, after the tornado, uh, they took less space. And second of all, as you know, they filed bankruptcy. And during bankruptcy court, they can um, reorganize. And they uh, had a settlement agreement with us that the um, Board of Aldermen approved. And so they're taking less space. Uh, as part of that settlement agreement, there was a surcharge that American Airlines was paying us also. Uh, for some uh, capital improvements they were doing, and that was reduced as well. And then finally, uh, Southwest Airlines was paying us a surcharge uh, for some capital improvements. They paid that off in 2013. So this is the, why the decrease of 3.4%. Utilities and charges, this is the amount that the airlines and our other tenants pay us for their usage. Uh, we're anticipating no change in that. Concessions. Um, the reason for the large increase, and we're very happy about this, is of 13.1% is a couple things. First of all, uh, the news and gift 
uh, and retail uh, concession contract that again we brought before the Board of Aldermen and was approved, uh, we get about 2.5, 2.7 million dollars more than we were uh, taking in uh, before and we had bid that out. Secondly, we've got a new restaurant coming in that was just before TNC uh, last week uh, at uh, Terminal 2. It's a pasta house slash uh, Schlafly's. We wanted to make it a local concept, so that contributes to the increase. And then finally, uh, we're very happy that in uh, the beginning of this calendar year, uh, we got a new general manager for HMS Hosts that we have a contract with for food and beverage. And he's making a lot of changes that were needed at the airport, uh, including um, customer service. And we believe and can already see that he's making a difference. And as I say, customer service equals revenue. And so that's included in this at all, as well. Rate mitigation, uh, the 13.7 million, um, this uh, helps with our debt service coverage and comes right from our debt service stabilization fund against the Board of Aldermen appro approves this uh, every year that we bring before them. It's two years now in a row. Interest, uh, we anticipate no change in that. And then fin uh, finally of the operating revenues, parking, um, these numbers are, uh, understand these numbers are net. So it's our ex parking expenses minus, excuse me, our parking revenue minus our expenses. Uh, we have an 8%, we're forecasting 8.5% increase, and this is due to a new ra uh, parking rate structure and uh, parking increase. Um, that we've already seen benefits from that not only benefits for the airport but benefits our passengers as well because now we know that they're parking more in the free cell phone lot and so they're um, not using up space in the long-term garages they're getting free parking but then we're getting our long-term parkers and that increases revenue so it's doing exactly what we saw in the month of april what we wanted it to do so all in all operating revenues were forecasting an increase of 2.3 percent and then finally, on pledged passenger facility charges, that's the PFCs, that's a $4.50 charge that um, passengers are charged for each segment of their trip and goes for capital improvements, which have to be approved by the FAA. These, um, this amount is not the amount that we take in. Uh, this amount pays our debt. Uh, service for this particular year and this is hundred and twenty five percent of that because we have to uh, honor our bond indenture of uh, debt service coverage the actual amount that we pay on our debt service for 2013 and 14 is approximately 22 million if you're wondering what well, what do you take in in passenger facility charges it's approximately 25 million dollars a year okay if we go to the next page our expense variances and again we'll be happy to take questions um, if you have specific questions on line items at the end of our presentation but just in general I wanted to show you that our just our O&M expenses not including debt service um, we are forecasting a 4.63 percent increase this is an unusual increase for the airport in the last four or five years because we really try to stay stable mm -hmm. so let me outline the reasons for this increase um, number one, as you're also dealing with on the general side of things, fringe benefits have gone up. And we have 537 employees, so of course that's gone up for us. And it's approximately $600,000. We're in the middle of finishing up a rather large project, which is called the Electronic Detection System, which um, the Homeland Security has give, is giving us approximately 85% of a $46 million project. And this, the bags go from the ticket counter uh, right in, and if you fly much, you know that right now when you uh, check in with a bag that you're checking, you have to take that bag and physically take it over to one of the uh, TSA guys and they put it on another command. That won't be the case anymore come by the end of the year. You know, the air airline gate agent will just take your bag and put it behind them and it'll go through and then there's these huge machines down in our bag claim area and that whole thing for both terminals is approximately 45 to 46 million. Well when we're done we have to maintain this thing and uh, that's going to be approximately 1.5 million a year of which n about we're budgeting for nine months and that's 1.1 million dollars. Uh, our custodial contract um, 
is increasing about 850,000 of which we've already uh, received approval for uh, for this uh, 14th fiscal year as an amendment to the contract. And the main reason for that is the airport experience program. Uh, we, uh, as part of the airport experience program, we've got new terrazzo floors and uh, we want to maintain them because they were expensive and we want to make the, have them look fantastic, not just clean, but we want them to look the way they're supposed to look when you pay all that money for something. The, we have a $300,000 uh, electric increase, and uh, Ameren uh, increased their rates by 10%, and that's what this is for. Um, our air service development uh, department, uh, their professional services are, uh, would increase uh, approximately $200,000, and the main reason for this is that we currently have an air cargo uh, consultant, if you will, that's being paid by Civic Progress. And he's been paid by Civic Progress, it's been wonderful, for two years. And, um, you know, they, they can only do that for so long. And so, and if you have questions about that, Rhonda can answer it later. Um, but we're taking on the air service consultant, um, and we're going to be coming through uh, for an amendment to the co our contract for that. So that's about 160000 of the 200000 and then finally, uh, an increase of uh, approximately $500,000 on the gross receipts payment that the airport gives to the city. Uh, the airport gives the city approximately $6 million per year. We are grandfathered in with the FAA, uh, so that's not considered <coughs> revenue diversion to the FAA. Debt service, um, a, a decrease of 0.26%. Uh, um, we do not have level debt service at the airport, so it goes up and it goes down. And then I just want to finally mention that um, this is even going to go down further. We're in the middle of doing a refunding bond deal, um, and we expect a savings of another $3 million. And so we don't know exactly what that is, so I can't budget for it. So, um, so total uh, increase is about 2.3%. And then finally, the next page on the budgeted positions, just to give you a little history here, that we have reduced our uh, employees' uh, count uh, since 2010 by about 96 positions, all through attrition, no layoffs, a lot of efficiencies. Um, every time a position opens, we look to see can we uh, absorb that position within other positions. Um, and, and uh, the airport director must approve any positions. Sometimes what we do also is we'll take a position, take two positions, make it one position if we have to. But um, the difference between 13 and 14 is five positions. Um, eight, and this is, remember, this is all through 2013 um, into 14. Uh, eight deletions or swaps, if you will, and three additional employees for a net of minus five. Um, and the three additions, uh, number one, we budgeted for a DBE program manager. Uh, we have budgeted for it, but I will tell you that we cannot fill that position unless it's funded by the city. It would totally be a city-related position, so the airport fund cannot uh, pay for it, but we budgeted for it in case the city can come up with the funds. Uh, we budgeted for a new painter, um, and actually that was from two positions that we put together, because if you've been at the airport, there's a lot of painting to do because it's white and it's beautiful and we want to keep it that way. And we have a picky airport director, and that's a good thing. <laughs> and then finally, an air, airfield maintenance worker. So I will turn it over to Randa. Okay. That kind of gives you an idea on the financial side. You know, I think one of the things we've been working really hard on is trying to educate uh, the community just on not how the airport operates from a financial perspective, but how do we operate as a business perspective as a whole and what's our goal? What is our goal to try and make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can from a customer experience, from an integration standpoint, from trying to connect St. Louis as a region to the airport and tie those things in. So on the first page, uh, just some facts. There are 457 public airports in the United States, and because of some of the changes that we've seen at Lambert over the last seven, eight years, people think we're not a significant airport anymore. We actually are number 30. So if you look at our significance in the air traffic system throughout the U.S., we have a substantial standing in that. So we still, we still are considered one of the um, busier airports in the country. 
And just to give you an idea, a lot of times I hear from people, you know, well, why can't we be like Indianapolis or why can't we be like a Raleigh Durham or a Cincinnati? And I always have to ask them in what terms because they're much smaller than we are. So if you take a look, this is just sort of an example of airports sometimes that people feel are significantly larger than we are, which actually are not. We're number 30. And if you take the next one, it's Houston Hobby. Now there is Houston Intercontinental, which is a larger airport. Oakland, Kansas City, Nashville, Austin, Raleigh, Cleveland, Santa Ana, all of these are below us in terms mm -hmm. of employments uh, on, a, on a yearly basis. So I think it's a good reference point for people to understand where we really are within the aviation system and we still have a, 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 a great amount of significance overall throughout, throughout the country. The next page just gives you an idea of where we are today with our carriers. One of the things we've tried to do is diversify ourselves in a city of uh, just shy or in a region just shy of three million people. It's important that we're not reliant on a single carrier. So we have diversified our number of carriers, brought more in, which makes us more stable and more uh, <coughs> attuned to be able to follow through this industry with the ups and downs and the consolidations and mergers. So today we have 11 signatory airlines. They also have some affiliates with those and there's some charter operations that are not signatory, but we have 11 signatory carriers. Uh, in 2013, we boarded just shy of uh, 14 million passengers. That's inplanements and deplanements, which was a 1.3% increase in inplanements. And our mix now is an 85% local mix and a 15% connecting. If you remember a decade ago when we were a single carrier hub, we were a 70% uh, connecting traffic and 30% local and that financial model was something that the airlines just couldn't substantiate because there was a lower yield on that connecting traffic. We have 254 uh, daily departures. We operate 11 charter flights a week and we serve 64 destinations nonstop out of here. The first quarter we saw a slight increase in traffic which was good because as a system in the whole uh, there was a decrease so we saw a slight when it was just 0.1 up. April was a significant increase. We saw a 2.5% increase in April. We're excited I think about the May numbers because we have the PGA this week. We've also got the uh, soccer game going on and we had some convention traffic so I think we'll see a strong May too but we, don't, we won't know until the end of the month. On the right is just the pie that sort of breaks down those uh, carriers that are signatory carriers. As you can see, Southwest is our largest, but it's 47% <coughs> of the traffic. That's a good spot to be in because it doesn't shy away other carriers because they're not the only uh, mm -hmm. operator out of here. If you were to look at that pie a decade ago, uh, the TWA number would have been 78%. So this is a much better place to be in today in terms of withstanding this industry. You heard Susan talk about one of the significant revenue windfalls for us uh, this year is our new news and gifts, which is Hudson. And so as we're going through all the airport renovations, uh, now we're going through all the new stores being built out. Mm -hmm. So several of them have already opened. Uh, several of them are under construction. We won't be completely finished, I think, until September with all the new stores. In the interim, they do have temporary stores, so there's not a lack of inconvenience or product to our customers, but we don't have all the finished product. Uh, this is just a look. Uh, they are, we really <coughs> wanted to have the St. Louis theme at the airport. We put it in when we put out the solicitation for bid that we wanted as much local concepts as possibly we could get. So there is a sports bar, uh, a sports bar, a uh, sports that's really all about, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> that really highlights uh, not just the sweatshirts and sort of the gear, but a lot of different mementos from our, our sports teams in St. Louis. So that one, this one is not open yet but it will be open soon uh, and that's kind of the look of it. If you look at the next page, I think it shows some of the ones that we do have open already and these have just been fabulous. There's a, a Hudson store, there's a new Bliss store. So Bliss is um, sort of a lotion, body works, all types of different products. It's uh, especially with the young generation, very well noted and it's, uh, it's really light and colorful. We've got a Discover St. Louis store, which is fabulous. They went out and researched a lot of local artists, mm. so they brought a lot of the local artist wares into the store, and we've just had great comments. It's down in Terminal 2. We have a kid work store for the first time, a really fun little store if you're traveling. What we've seen a lot of people uh, is on their way home, uh, grab something for the kids, or if they've got a birthday and they didn't have time to shop, it's a great little place to stop and get it. So, And then we've got a spectacles. We actually have two of these spectacle stores, very high-end sunglasses, 
uh, which seem to be selling fairly well. We have one in Terminal 2 and one in Terminal 1 as well. So these are open ones. And then the Eddie Bauer, which is going to be our signatory clothing store, which is kind of a, a high-end Eddie Bauer store, will be the first in the country to have an Eddie Bauer in the airport. There is another one that's got a contract as well through Hudson. But this will be the look and feel of that. It will replace the Brooks Brothers store that was on the Sea Concourse. So this one uh, should be opening by the end of the summer. And then we've got an Ebony News uh, coming. This one's under construction uh, now, trying to, to get that done. That's going to be at C5. Uh, kind of a look at their overall newsstands. We have several of the newsstands throughout the store. The old contract had MSNBC, the new contract has CNN, so this is kind of how those look. Very colorful, very interactive. And then um, also on the last page, we've got a Natalie's Candy going in, uh, which is kind of a fun store. And they did a lot of market research. Hutchins came in and really tried to research the market to find what would sell well here. And I think with the stores, because remember, they give us a guaranteed minimum uh, whether they sell or not. So that was the deal when, when they won the contract. So they're doing everything they can to make sure that they also uh, still have a profit in their net. So they did a lot of market research, and I think the research is proving that the stores that they've opened are what the customers want, and they're willing to spend the dollars in them. So that's been really good. And then uh, if you take a look, uh, some of the other renovations that's going on, the concourses are all complete with the tornado and the airport experience renovation. Some of the stores, which is a little a different project with Hudson, are still under, but the concourses are complete. The Terminal 1 bag claim is almost complete. There is some overhead work being done upstairs on the drive to replace the membrane and the pavers to stop the leaks. So there's still a little bit of work that you see going on with that. The ticket counter areas are all being redone. That is probably 70% of the way. We should have by the end of the summer or beginning of September all the ticket counter work done as well. We have had a lot of fun uh, with the stage. We put a stage in to be able to try to highlight again local artists. Mm -hmm. So when we have things going on, big events, uh, when we had customer appreciation week a couple weeks ago, I think we had seven or eight different bands out or individuals or trios playing music for our customers. Uh, when we've got the PGA in this week, we've got uh, a band playing. So we try to highlight when we've got a lot of people coming through the airport and just focus on the local artists that we've got. And it's been a lot of fun. There's no lack of finding people who want to play, so that's been good. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of interest. Uh, I thought this one would be worth showing because one of the things that we can do with our new um, removing all of the ticket counters and removing all of the inline baggage systems that Susan spoke of, which take a lot of space up in the area, allowed us in the last section of the uh, ticketing level, which we will be renovating, we're actually putting an outdoor garden. And we're working with the botanical gardens on bringing in Missouri native trees and flowers to that. So it'll be a stone paver, but the garden will be built up in uh, these large boxes, if you want to call them containers. And so that's been a fun project, again, trying to highlight on the, the you know, beautiful trees and plants that grow in Missouri, and there will be narratives with them in all of the planners as well, sort of talking about what they are, and, and the botanical gardens has been great with that. On the inside, if you look at this is where the, the garden will be on the outside. To the inside, what you'll see is also a seating area that's going to be open. A whole section of the counters is going to be removed, and it will be an open seating area which people will be able to sit in the ticket counter, have coffee, it'll have nice lounging, and then you can view <coughs> to the outside. We're working on a couple of sculptures, uh, working with a couple of different organizations in towns to bring out some <coughs> art sculptures there as well to kind of highlight that. So the EDS system is the inline baggage system that Susan spoke of. That should be open in Terminal 1 in October, I think in Terminal 2 in November. It'll be a huge enhancement to our customers not having to drag their bags and a much better screening process. So still a little bit going on with those renovations. By the uh, end of the fall, uh, they should all be complete, and I think everybody will be able to come out and, and be very proud of the airport. One of the other things I'd like to highlight on the next page has just been the success we've had as we've tried to build the community support for the airport is uh, the different ways in which the city uh, and organizations have supported us. You heard Susan talk about Civic Progress, which agreed to if we thought if we wanted to do cargo and really focus on an international cargo hub, which we're still doing and working very hard on, we needed the cargo director. Civic Progress stepped up to the plate and funded that for two years. Now we're picking up that individual's cost. Uh, some of the other things that they've done is they, they funded a significant portion of our wayfinding signage at the airport through the Regional Business Council and some of their members who stepped up to the plate to say we're willing to sink in a quarter of a million dollars to do improved signage. 
they stepped up to the plate in terms of being able to um, be part of a survey through Airports Council International, a survey that tells us what do our customers think, think about us. It's, it was a significant amount of dollars. We, the airport, felt like we didn't really want to spend those dollars in trying to make sure that we keep our costs low. Again, Civic Progress and the Regional Business Council stepped up to the plate and is covering the cost of that, which is well over $100,000. Then one of the fun things is we, we saw through Rally St. Louis, which hopefully most of you have heard about, is just a kind of a grassroots organization to have people submit ideas of things that could improve our, our city and our region. And there were lots of ideas submitted for the airport. Uh, one of the more fun ones was uh, kind of an airport playground. And so with that, they've been able to step up to the plate. And again, they've got <coughs> almost all the funding for that. It's about $125,000 that's needed to build this. It's going to be through the Magic House. So for those of you who know the Magic House in Kirkwood, which is a phenomenal play center, I guess, if we want to call it, known around the world for it, both its educational and, and artistic value, They've designed this. They'll be the ones that install it. They'll do the maintenance on it. And we're <coughs> providing the space for them to put it in. Uh, it's scheduled to open in February of 14. But I think once it's open, we can really look to say and probably get awards that says it's the best playground anywhere in the world in an airport. So those type of partnerships would be very hard for us as an airport to do. And different organizations, different people are stepping up to the plate and saying it's it's important that we support our airport and we make it the best that we can. And these kind of infrastructure um, financial enhancements that they're, they're giving us or they're supporting us with have really made a difference, I think, as a whole. If you look at the, hopefully everybody's heard, we've got the solar impulse coming. We were competing very heavily uh, with Atlanta and Nashville and uh, Chicago was initially on the list but kind of dropped prior. We, we were thought it, would, it was going to go to, to Atlanta. We made a hard pitch that it should come here with the aviation history that we have. It left this morning from Phoenix, so it will arrive in Dallas tonight, somewhere around midnight to 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. The expected arrival in St. Louis is next week. We anticipate if the weather goes well, because it is very weather dependent. Mm. Uh, it sat for 15 days in Phoenix before it could make it to Dallas with all the storms and tornadoes out mm. in that area. But uh, it should arrive here next week. We'll have public viewing days that will be posted online. But one of the reasons they cited for picking St. Louis uh, as a spot was not just our overall infrastructure of the airport and our ability to get them in and out. We had a hangar available to them, but it was really more about the rich history here and continuing the history of aviation. And so we think this is a, a pretty significant event. Uh, we'll tell a lot of the story. Uh, if for those of you who want to come out and see it, we've got some uh, board set up about the aviation history and, and how important it's been to St. Louis, to the airport, and to the region followed on by this. There will be a lot of news conferences and stuff. We were very hopeful that it didn't arrive this week with everything else going on, so we were a little happy with the weather delays. So, <laughs> so we should see it next week. Uh, stay tuned for that. And then the last piece I'll talk about is, uh, again, trying to integrate St. Louis into the airport. You know, we've put in an art gallery that uh, we've been able to fund through private donations and our art of travel event where we raise funds. We've been able to bring the terrazzo floor and uh, this mosaic, not a mosaic, but a terrazzo inlay that was designed by a local artist here. And, you know, in both terminals, one and two, uh, we continue to try to raise funds. We also got a $25,000 grant from the Regional Arts Commission. So right now we have an RFQ on the street that the Board of Public Service put out which is for an artist, uh, we're trying to commission a piece for about $65,000 to have a significant art piece in our new open area where the atrium is. So all of those things, again, that's all been through uh, fundraising and through uh, grants and dollars that we've raised privately, not through using our airport dollars. But as we do this, it just highlights again sort of the growing St. Louis overall region toward arts and a sustainable community and what it means to live in a vibrant community. So when people say there's nothing going on at the airport, that couldn't be further <laughs> from the truth. We have a lot going on. Uh, I think uh, very proud of all the team, not only from a finance standpoint, <coughs> but uh, the maintenance workers, the painters, I mean, they feel like Disney World. They've taken great, great pride in making sure that every day, if we've got marks on our new, very white, uh, very clean airport, they're out there fixing them. And I think it has gone all the way down to the frontline employees feeling better about the airport and the comments. And the cleanliness is a big deal to me. It's one of the things we heard over and over and over when I took this job is that it, it felt dirty, it felt dingy. 
with the renovations, it was to be a more open and light airport. When you have a more open and light airport, uh, when stuff is dirty, it gets noticed much easier. So, you know, we don't have the dark carpets anymore. We don't have the dark purple walls. We have white, and so white, you know, does take a lot of maintenance. But the team has uh, taken a lot of pride in making sure that they keep it up. So that's, um, that's our presentation. We are happy, any of the team is happy to answer any of the questions that any of you have. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions from the committee, Alderman Cruson. Uh, a couple of questions, Rhonda. First of all, I think the airport does look much better than it did a few years ago. And all of, all of the hard work for you, from you and your team has, has paid off. Um, one of the things that I notice is that Terminal 2, because of, I guess, Southwest Airlines is 47% mm -hmm. of our flights going out, Terminal 2 parking is regularly full. Mm -hmm. And so you got to go to Terminal 1 again, and you got to take a shuttle back. And that's all okay when you're coming home, but when you're, you should have gotten to the airport earlier than you, you know. Yeah. Are there any plans um, to either expand the parking at Terminal 2? I mean, you can see that only about half of that surface mm -hmm. parking lot has structured parking on right. top of it. Right. And you kind of drive, so I mean, obviously, right. there, you would have the space, I guess, mm -hmm. to expand the parking there. or you know, to put the most major airline in Terminal 1, right. or, I mean, are, are there some, yeah, there's, are, there know. are a number of things. Uh, we did speak to Southwest to see if they were interested, especially as they continue to grow, to relocate to Terminal 1, which had more uh, space in the garage and obviously had more gates available. That's not what they wanted to do, and, you know, uh, that's their call. We want to make them happy. Right. They like the fact that Terminal 2 is theirs, and yep. uh, it's sort of their signature. Sure. So we've, we've talked to them. One of the things we did earlier in the year was we added about 90 slots in the garage. We have a, a new parking right. vendor that came on, and they aggressively looked mm -hmm. at how can we, how, what can we do. Right. So they found uh, 90 additional spots by restriping, doing some things. That helped a little bit. We still f were filling up on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. They started running reports for us and doing studies. One of the things that we found out was that a significant amount, over 50% of the parkers in that garage were parking less than two hours, which means they're running in and running out, which is why we built the additional cell phone lot to encourage people. You don't need, you know, unless it's an elderly passenger that you, you're meeting or if it's an unaccompanied child, we understand that. but there really isn't a need to park and go in, and we would rather utilize those spots sure. for our long-term parkers. So the second cell, fo cell phone lot opened earlier this year. We've done a lot of marketing with that. That is working. It's helping. Uh, we, si we certainly see it. If you drive by in the mornings, you drive by at 4 to 8 o'clock at night or at 1030, you see it very, very full in those cell phone lots. So that's encouraging. We, we started seeing uh, in the month of April was our new parking increase, and again, that was to encourage those to use the free lot and not pay right. uh, in or the, go to the longer term or go to the longer term and so for the first month what we saw is if we looked at April of 2012 the overall average day of all parkers in the terminal 2 garage was eight to nine hours the first month that we implemented the new uh, parking increase if you want to call it that went from 24 to 26 hours so if the first month that we looked at it, it doubled, meaning that more people are getting in there who are long-term parkers and less of the short-term parkers are in there, which is the whole process. So we have one month to look at. We also saw for the month of April an 11% increase in revenues. We also saw fewer days fill up mm -hmm. in April, which was encouraging, meaning, again, as people are moving toward those self lot, I still think you're going to see days that fill up but I think they're filling up with long-term partners, mm -hmm. which is what we want. Right. To look at, and we've talked to Southwest about this <coughs> as well, to look at building an addition um, on that surface lot and taking it up to the level is significant dollars, which means Southwest would eventually pay for that. At the end of the day, it goes back to the airlines. If we're putting in... Sure. Oh, and parking that because of the parking sorry. revenue. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, it, that would come out of we would that would come out of our airport development fund, yeah. and. Actually, Go ahead. Yeah, do you mind? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, we had a study done uh, a couple years ago to see if we could do exactly what you're talking about. And because the parking revenue has to pay for the debt service on that. And when the analysis was done, it was determined that we just didn't have enough parkers 
to sustain the debt service, mm -hmm. and the airport just can't do that. And then we also did take it to Southwest and showed it to them, and they said, first of all, we don't want the airport getting into additional debt because we already are in, you know, quite a bit of debt that uh, we're paying off. So between the two of them, that's why we started going to the other options that Rhonda's okay. talking about. Okay. Um, rate mitigation, what, what is that and who pays it? Okay. Um, we have, as part of negotiating the new airline use agreement in, for 2011, uh, we asked the airlines to step up to the pla plate and pay more for the costs at the airport. They, had, they did that, but then they wanted something in return, and we knew that, according to our bond indenture, we have to make a debt service coverage. It's called, excuse me, it's 1.25, and that was one of the reasons why our ratings were not increasing, is because we were just making it, and we had to come up with a mechanism, if you will. So we went to the comptroller, and we have a fund called the Debt Service Stabilization Fund, uh, according to the bond indenture, and it has approximately 33, 34 million in there. Who pays it? Who pays this 13? The Debt million. Service Stabilization Fund that came from over the last five to six years from our airport revenues is in this fund, and I come to the. Uh, How much is in the fund in total? Uh, well, it, it's usually about 33 million, and then when you take the 13.7 out. Uh, you know, you get about 10, well, it's usually 18 million, so it's about 35 million, excuse me. And will more money, does more money go into that every what year? Happens is that is what happens with it's, the... It revolves. At well, the let end, me just, let me finish okay, my question. Okay, I'm sorry. So the pledge PFCs, does the additional, uh, does the excess there go into the rate mitigation fund? No. It does not. No. Okay. So uh, 13 million is coming out every year, so you've got about a three-year... Back it goes back in. It revolves around. At the end, of, we ask for the transfer at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the next fiscal year, we transfer it back into that DSSF, Debt Service Stabilization Fund. We come back through the whole legislative process, and it goes on. If, if it turns out that we need any of that money during the year to pay for something, the airlines have to do a backstop on it, and they have to pay it. Okay. So we always have 13.7 that revolves. Okay, I, I can talk to you maybe later sure, about that. Sure, absolutely. It, it's a complicated process. Yeah. What it sound, I mean, what it's it, in and out money. It is. So is it real money? Yeah. Sure. What, what, okay. it, what it does is it allows, it allows the airlines to not make up that $13 million. We're able to use it out of that fund, mm -hmm. transfer it back in at the end of the year. It, you know, we don't lose our 1.25 coverage. I mean, we're able to stay that as well because it always goes back into the fund. So it was a mechanism. What we were trying to do is make sure that the airline's costs were not increasing. Mm -hmm. And it allowed a mechanism to be able to do that. The bond indenture allowed it. Uh, in working through with the comptroller's office, it was something uh, that was brought together, uh, which was a solution for both the airport and the airlines. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's been very successful, actually, for the first year. So 13 was the first year? Yes. Uh, uh, every year. Every year for five years, it'll be 13.7. But this was the first 2013 year. 2013 was 2012 the... No, 2012 was the first year. Um, St. Louis is number 30 now mm -hmm. in, in the list of airports, and I think that that maybe is better than a lot of people might have expected it, mm -hmm. it was. Um, what was it back in the good old days when we had, uh, you know, when TWA was really around and before Carl Icahn? Number seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what, um, American Airlines is our second largest carrier at, what, 14% or something? I think they're up to uh, 17, I think. I may have read that wrong or remembered it wrong, but, and, and so what, what do you, I, I mean, that seems like that is a, would be a big concern, yeah, this, what does that say, 17, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, their bankruptcy and I, I don't really follow that very closely, but that would be a, a significant concern. 
Well, they're coming out of the bankruptcy uh, this summer. They'll mm -hmm. be out of the bankruptcy. They are merging with U.S. Airways, mm -hmm. uh, which financially for them will be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I think what we've looked at is with the merger of American and U.S. Air, uh, none of their markets overlap. American operates into six markets here. U.S. Air operates into four. So between the two, we have ten. And there's no American only <coughs> operates into six markets. Six markets. They do their hubs out of here. That's all they operate at in, into here is their hubs. So of the 64 nonstop destinations, American operates into six of them. And U.S. Air has four, which are their four mm -hmm. hubs. So if you look at the 10 different cities that they fly to with no overlapping, we would not anticipate any reduction of service. Mm -hmm. We do think we could see some upgaging of some of the U.S. Air aircraft. They operate a lot of regional jets. Right. With the merger and picking up the base of customers that American has, I think we could see some upgauge of those aircraft to some larger aircraft, which mm -hmm. would be more seats available. More not necessarily more possibly. flights, but more seats and more flights. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, you know, American, as is, is you heard Susan talk earlier, we've gone through all the bankruptcy with that. We actually uh, did fairly well out of that. When we look at uh, what's trading right now on, uh, it's at about, what, 92 cents, I think, when the other yeah, day? Yeah, on the unsecured claims. Claim. So we think we'll, for the unsecured claim that we have, we think that we'll get pretty close to all of that back. How um, much is that? Close to five million. And is that anywhere in this, these revenue numbers? No, no that would be... <coughs> That would be found addition. money. Yeah. That would be good. Okay. And lastly, um, TSA employees mm -hmm. don't work for you? They do not. And um, do you have any influence or um, um, <laughs> over their friendliness? Is we, there any? <laughs> we, we think we do. We try. Um, we meet regularly with uh, the federal security director and his senior team here. That's Bill Switzer. He is very prone to customer service, uh, which is a good thing for us. And I think, you know, they've come a long way in the last two years to try and do some additional training, to try to put some programs in place. We try to intermingle with them so they feel like they're part of the airport. They're not a separate entity, although they are. And so I, you know, if, if we look at the overall complaints coming in on the TSA, uh, it's far less on the customer service. The complaints tend to be more just about the length of line sometimes. So we, we have seen a reduction in the complaints from customers coming in to the airport complaining about the unfriendliness of it. We I wouldn't complain about it because I'm resigned to it. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> unfortunate. That's not good. So, I mean, we, we do, you know, we do take it very seriously, and they know every single complaint that we get or issue that we have, it is in front of them the very same day, if not the next day. And who decides how many lines to open up I mean it they do their <laughs> staffing model uh, we call trust me we spend who, a lot of time pays for them <laughs> you don't uh, that doesn't come out of our budget in any way no. I mean we all pay for them as taxpayers yeah. but I mean it, it, no, it comes out of the federal government so I would encourage them to run all four lines at the south well they they are <laughs> you know they are restricted on their staffing just like everything uh, we try and get uh, if, if we we have a program now where the airlines supply to them on a weekly basis their daily numbers mm -hmm. and by peak so they know uh, that doesn't mean they always accommodate but they know what they are when we have weeks like this with the PGA and very high profile right. coming in we see them staff better uh, yeah. when, when we know good. it's very high profile or when we have a very high profile convention like with yeah. you know so I mean we I, do I actually I mean I, I complain about it a bit but um, it's as good or better than any other airport. Yeah. So maybe that, you know, that, that's sort of, I, I guess, the standard that as passengers we're all resigned to a bit, which mm -hmm. is like, oh, yeah, I got to take my shoes off. But, and, you know, e and oh, yeah, I guess they're not going to be friendly because they have this really serious job or something, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, I mean, there's, you can <laughs> still be friendly and have a serious job. Right. I know. Well, anyway. Um, okay, that, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. All in Florida. I just have a follow-up question <coughs> to Lydas. Um, you know, in light of the fact that TSA is, a, is federally funded mm -hmm. and the effects of sequestration, um, what is the communication between the federal government, TSA, and, and, and our airport? Mm -hmm. So, you know, because it sounds to me like you're communicating your need, mm -hmm. um, and it, it sounds like it may, there, is it an informal, or formal yeah. communication? No, we have, we have a pretty formal communication. And, and if we feel like we're not getting uh, attention from the local, 
We have gone to Washington. Uh, last month I had Pistol in. Pistol is in charge of uh, all of the Homeland Security. Okay. Well, it was more than a month. He came in about two months ago, actually. Uh, and some of it from the concerns that we had voiced that, you know, we looked at the numbers uh, of, of comparison, which we do a lot at other airports. What is the average wait line? What's the average process in time? It seems that we are slower in processing here, and that's something that we have noticed. Uh, the numbers validate that. They, we asked the TSA locally what they were going to do about that. Uh, we didn't quite get a satisfactory answer, and so we went to Washington, and we did have a visit by Mr. Pistol. He came in, and we have seen them uh, step up to the plate in trying to do some more creative things to get a better processing time so that they're not taking 90 seconds versus the average 52 seconds or whatever the numbers is those numbers are not accurate I'm just making them up but they were they had a significant higher processing time as a whole and so uh, when we got the attention of Mr. Pistol it got the attention locally as well so we try to keep things local if we can but if we're not satisfied we do not hesitate going to Washington have you seen any direct effect of sequestration on our airport we have not locally the TSA did not have even when the furloughs were in place, the TSAs were, did not have the furlough. There was a hiring freeze. They were up to speed on their hiring. There was just a handful of vacancies, nothing significant. So they really were not affected. The airports that had the most effect on the TSA agents were those that had significant vacancies. I think LA had over 160. Uh, Chicago, some of the larger airports had significant vacancies. Those were frozen, so they had impacts uh, through some of that first <coughs> month and a half that was challenging. On the air traffic control towers, we were never slotted to be closed on the midnight hour. We were never one of the ones slotted to be closed uh, permanently and, and offset through another one or operated by another one. We, d we were affected by the one week, one day a week furlough. Uh, our tower agents here were, were very, very good and we did not see delays out of St. Louis. We did see delays into other cities, so there were delays into Chicago, into San Francisco, especially into LaGuardia during that first six week where those airports were having significant challenges with the furloughs and putting holds on flights coming into their markets. We did not post a single hold coming into St. Louis as a result of, it, of sequestration. So we were a lot less impacted than others, but like everything, it trickles and affects your passengers because the airports are flying to some of them were affected. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, before I call the next, I didn't realize that there's a 10 o'clock, what is it, HUDS meeting, and then we have an 11 o'clock public safety meeting today. So I do realize some of you may have to get up and go and at least make a quorum in the other meeting. So I just want to, and we may also hear some announcements going on as okay. well, so no one goes into shock. <laughs> we know that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, Alderman Williamson. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, this is one question. Back in 97, when they expanded the runway, and I guess we were ranked probably seventh, like you said earlier, and come to airports throughout the country. How is that affecting the budget <clears throat> with the airport? And I know, I guess we saw the tape on, but Elliot Davis and the control. And I don't know that the uh, citizens are still paying for that, but how is that affecting the, the airport budget when it comes to the debt service of paying for that? And do you forecast an expansion of that runway anytime soon or putting that runway in place? Because I know back then, when it was prior to, you know, the 911 mm -hmm. dilemma and the crash. Right. And, you know, we were booming then, but now, and there was no fault of control of you guys' decision. We understand how everything yeah. got, you know, kind of shutting down. Mm -hmm. So it was a good investment at the time. But just wanted to know what are the effects mm -hmm. now? Well, first of all, the citizens don't pay for it. We are an enterprise fund and we're, you know, an airport. We, we're supported through a user fee, the, both the passengers using our terminal, uh, the airlines using it, the tenants using it through the concessions, through the revenue that comes in, and through federal funding. So, so the cost of the, the runway, we don't pay for that? No, no, no. We, the airport, do, but the citizens in St. Louis do not. I mean... With the taxpayers, we don't... It doesn't, the break no, doesn't fall no, on no, and I, I've had this discussion with Mr. Davis several times, uh, <laughs> trying to get him to understand that we, we, we are not taxpayer dollars. We are not funded through the taxpayers. We are funded through uh, user fees, and we're funded through federal dollars. Okay, so, I see. Uh, That's so good to know. Now, so that being said, uh, we do have substantial debt because of the runway being open. However, 
it is still being paid for and if, if you followed some of the releases we put out recently we have not faulted defaulted on any of our payments we just went through because of the refunding that Susan spoke of we have about 32 33 million dollar refunding coming up which we've been able to take advantage of now I think the last three years in a row uh, yes. on some of the d bonds that were callable we just got upgraded <coughs> by both S&P well by both by all three S&P's Moody's and Fitch so with uh, Fitch we were a triple B we got upgraded to a triple B plus with Moody's and S&P we got upgraded to an A3 and an A minus all with stable outlooks so that was a pretty significant windfall for us and the rating agents what they cited was that even though our debt is high they saw a revenue stream that was stable they saw activity increasing we've looked at other means of trying to bring in in revenue and doing land leases and some other things uh, we've got some other ones that uh, we believe will happen this year as soon as we get the Missouri Air National Guard facility back with tenants and revenue coming in there. So the rating agencies looked at that and said, yes, you are an airport with high, high cost, high debt, but at the same time, you've got a system in place that's covering all of it. And the airlines are still able to operate here and make a money even with the higher fees. So what we, what we try to do is any way that we can continue to pay that debt down quicker, do the refunding, lower the cost, we'll do that so that the, the landing fees go down and the terminal rental rates, if they possibly can, can go down. That's what the airlines are looking for. They're looking for a plan that says, show me stability, show me that my costs aren't going to increase, and little by little, you know, edge them down. So uh, I would still say the runway was one of the a great great investment and it's our marketing tool right now as we try as a region to talk about the kind of logistic hub that we can be both from rail water highway and air uh, marking it and I will tell you we've got uh, an organization in right now uh, very heavily looking on the cargo side that would be a domestic operation I mean it would be a domestic airline but operation an international cargo flight so I think in time we can make good use of it and hopefully uh, get revenues in to pay it down quicker or make our, our cost to the airlines less. How long will it take to pay it off? Just 2030, yeah, uh, 2033, 34, something. Somewhere there. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. If I may, Alderman, I just want to tell you where in the landing fees, that's mm -hmm. where it's being paid. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's where you generate the revenue to pay down the debt. Right. Gotcha. And that's why our landing fees are higher. Okay, I see. Thank you. That's all I have. Alderman Moore? I don't sense a, uh, detect the sense of prejudice when you're choosing colors for the airport. You know, you say it's going to be white and, <laughs> and not the dark colors. You know, dark is good. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. not in the airport. <laughs> So I wanted to make sure that I didn't find you to be a prejudiced lady. You seem to be. I wrong. am not. <laughs> I want to make sure. Thank you for pointing that. Yeah. Um, on page, uh, the second page, the third, no, second page here, at the bottom where it said pledge PFCs, yeah. why are those prices the same? The amount that we, uh, that is the amount of PFCs, passenger facility char mm -hmm. charges, it's pledged to pay our, down our debt service. And for 2013 and 2014, it's the same, same amount okay. that we pay down our debt service. Once again, that is not the amount that we take in to the airport. Here's a question. Uh, when, the, when the county take over the city, who's going to control the airport? Um, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> that will be for the powers to be to determine. I just thought maybe I'd ask that. Uh, on the page where you got the physical year 13 and 14 expense variants, uh, you called out a lot of numbers, but we didn't have anything to follow along. Is that in our in our manual here? It's within your account uh, okay. line items. If you would okay. like me to do a summary through the chair, I can do that. Mm -hmm. If you would like that. No. Yes. That would be helpful. It's okay. on page 150. Okay, that's what I was asking. Was yeah. it in the manual? Yes. No problem. Mm. And the signature means the the higher up the, the when you're talking about signature. Signatory carriers. Yes. Yes. Yeah, signatory carriers are ones who sign our use and lease agreement, and then uh, uh, all have the same rates. If they choose, sometimes you have charter operators that fly in here once a mm -hmm. week or once a month, <laughs> and they choose not to sign a long-term agreement. Very non-signatory carrier. What that means is they pay an upcharge of 
25 percent on their landed weight when they come in. Okay. But to them, if they're not operating on a daily basis and didn't want to sign a five-year use and lease agreement, mm -hmm. then they can choose to be non-signatory and just pay that upcharge when they do land and when they come in. Do we have a sports bar in uh, the airport? Yes, sure. we do. Couple. Please come out. Uh, I'll be happy to show uh, it to you. I, I can't <laughs> let my good deeds be evil spoken of. You know. <laughs> Uh, the pasta house and the uh, Slaskies, are they going to look like this? Are they in this scheme of things? They're not because that's a, uh, that's a news and gift concession. Okay. So that's under our uh, food and beverage. And it's going to be a direct house with the airport. It's not, that one is not run through HMS Host, our, our food and concession. We did one directly with it. It will have the pasta house and Schlafly look to it. If you've seen the Schlafly's that's in on Terminal uh, 1 on the mm -hmm. C concourse, the bar area that's in this new restaurant will look like that. The other side will look like your typical pasta house. Uh, okay. So it's a combination of the two. It's the first time they've partnered together <coughs> to sort of do it jointly. And uh, hopefully it'll be a success and they can look at it in other areas and other markets. So someone need to help me out. Eddie Bauer is still popular? Yeah, and, and their new signatory store, which is a, a, a little <coughs> higher end of Eddie Bauer, uh, is doing quite well in, in the retail markets across the country. So. I can't afford it anyway. So there is one at Galleria, Alderman Moore. Okay. I can't even spell Galleria. <laughs> <laughs> in the new garden, in the new garden, will it be non-smoking? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I notice that civic progress is stepping up to the plate. You know, a lot of us don't have money. If I had money, I would step up to the plate. But is that a form of control? Is be, you know, I mean, they're giving their money, mm -hmm. you know, but when they they're paying all this money, they control. To the victor goes the spoils. So. They haven't asked me for one thing. Okay. All right. I'll ask you later. Okay. <laughs> and will we have a ceremony next week with the uh, with the plane coming in? We will. We'll have an arrival party. It'll probably arrive about midnight, so we'll have a midnight arrival party. Mm -hmm. That's being organized through the Science Center for okay. us. Um, All right. And then we will have uh, the first day after its arrival, mm -hmm. we will have website that you can go to sign up will have 400 people an hour that we can take that'll mm -hmm. be open from noon to four and then we're working on a reception that evening and I'll work with the <coughs> aldermen on uh, trying to get an invite to all the aldermen to that thank you that's it thank you alderman Vaccaro mm -hmm. I know Luke, and maybe I'm wrong but isn't that about a billion dollars right now like close to it close to it yes is it but we are oh we're paying it down sure it? Sure. Do you anticipate quite a few years, I guess, to get it down? Are we really with that? No, no. And we made a commitment to the airlines that we would not take on uh, new or additional debt, at least during the life of this use and lease agreement, which runs through June of 2016. Uh, unless it was a, an emergency or a federal uh, mandate that we had to do something, but we made a commitment to them that we would not take on additional debt. Okay, that was all. I was curious how it was going. Okay. Is that complete you? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other... Alderman, do you have no. any questions? Are there any other questions from members of the committee? It's not? Well, we thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all thank for you. your time. Thank you for all the information. Thank you for your mm -hmm. Alderman Kennedy, if there were some not here, do you want us to leave these packages you? for your yes. other members? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Next we have Chris, I believe they're out.